Hi friends, today we're going to look at and pray through a prayer of forgiveness, which is Psalm 51. Hi friends, I'm Miss Nancy Ruth. And I'm Mr. Roger. We want to see kids living for Jesus. This is part of Bible Drill Red Cycle. For more information, check out the description below. So let's start with how to find this passage and how to remember how it's found, because this is a very famous psalm. First, um, let oh, I'll come back to that. All right, we're going to talk about how to find it. So it's found in the book of Psalms, and it's a song or um, the lyrics of a song that are typed out, which is also kind of like a poem as well. So here's how to find the book of Psalms. Psalms is in the Old Testament. It's a book of poetry. These are also called books of wisdom. Open your Bible in the middle. You should be in Psalms or Proverbs. Then flip right or left to find the book you want. The job of peas is to provide excellent songs for Isaiah. Job, Psalms, Proverbs. All right, so if you look carefully at this image, I'll make it a little bit bigger. Um, it's a guy praying in front of a cross. And they kind of sort of, if you use your imagination, look like a 51, kind of sort of. Well, at least that's what I was going for. <laughs> but Psalm 51 is this psalm, and it's very famous. Um, and let me give you a little bit of context about how, um, what all was happening when this psalm was written. First, um, this was after David had sinned with Bathsheba. He'd done a great sin, and then he had her husband murdered to cover it up. And then he went about like nothing was the problem and until the prophet Nathaniel came in, um, helped him see, you know, God, God saw what you did. You didn't cover it up and it was wrong. <laughs> and you, what you did was wrong. It was a sin and you need to confess that sin and ask for forgiveness because there's no covering this up. You did, you messed up, pal. You messed up big time. And so this is the song that David penned afterward as um, a way of expressing his repentance to the Lord. So let's look at a prayer for forgiveness. This is David asking God for forgiveness, and we're going to pray it through together. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according to the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. Look at all the different um, synonyms for sin. Sin is, is disobeying God. That's all it is. He's asking for forgiveness from the Lord. Have mercy on me, O Lord. For I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against thee, thee only have I sinned. This is interesting, because he sinned against um, Bathsheba. He, sin she, he sinned against her husband, and against the others in the army that died with the husband he had killed. And yet he saw that, yes, he had wronged the other people, but his primary sin was against God. That was his primary sin, had broken his relationship with God. And God is more important than anyone or anything else. Against thee, thee only have I sinned, and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightst be justified when thou speaks, and be clear when thou judgest. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Uh, in today's language, we might say, throw me in the bleach cycle in the washing machine, and I will be clean. I will be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins, and blot out all mine iniquities. Forgive me, Lord Jesus. Create in me a clean heart, O God and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit, to help me to keep going on the right path. Then I will teach transgressors other sinners thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God, thou God of my salvation. Isn't this interesting? This was written before Jesus was even born. And yet, Jesus wasn't born yet as a human, but he is also the eternal God. And David is praying to God, my Savior, that's to Jesus Christ, even before we knew his name. I think that's pretty cool. And my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall show forth praise. 
For thou desirest not sacrifice, else I would give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offering. God doesn't want us to do good things for him. He doesn't want us to make up for things. Here's what he wants. You ready? Verse 17. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart, O God, thou wilt not despise. He wants to see that we see sin the way God sees sin. And we are truly sorry and humbled by it and seeking, honestly seeking God's forgiveness and asking God to change our hearts so that we can better follow him and honor him and all we say unto him. Do good in thy good pleasure unto Zion. Build thou the walls of Jerusalem. Then shalt thou be pleased with the sacrifices of righteousness, with burnt offering and whole burnt offering. Then shall they offer bullocks upon thine altar. See, it's not that God doesn't want us to do good things and to do things for him and to serve the Lord. But if our heart isn't right, if our heart isn't in it, if our heart is seeking to make up for the bad things we're doing by doing all these good things, that's not what God wants. God wants our hearts to be right with him. Then the things that we do are for God's glory, not to make us look better and to make up for the bad things we do. That's the main difference. And remember, David was praying and asking God for forgiveness, and God does forgive a contrite heart, but it's because of what Jesus did on the cross. He came and he lived a perfect life. He never sinned, not even once. And he died on the cross once and for all to take our punishment for sin, and he came back to life again. So that if we believe in Jesus, that he is who he says he is, and that he died for our sins and came back to life again, we will be saved, and we will live with God forever, up in heaven and the Holy Spirit will come and live with us like the Holy Spirit lived with David. First John 1 John 1.9 says, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Don't forget to subscribe. We post memory verses in four translations, key passages, answers to Bible questions, and more. Check out our store and freebies at parentroadmin.com. We love you, friends. See you next time.